Steve Hello, Suzanne. And uh, we're going to do another topic today. You want to tell us what uh, would you like to talk about? Um, already in a lot of stores, the Halloween merch uh, merchandise is out already. When it's only when it when it's um, only the early part of September. Um, we won't really start thinking about scary things till uh, October begins. But um, but there is something I I want to talk about that that really exists, although not the way we uh, traditionally claim it does. Um, and there are many more of them than than we like to think. Uh, they uh, they they exist not just in some fabled land, but uh, many are right here in the United States, and goodness knows how many others there may be in uh, uh, in other countries. Uh, uh, what, are, what are we talking about? Vampires. Ah, uh, the vampires. Okay, but you, you wanted to talk about the real ones. No, no I'm, I'm talking about real-life uh, vampires. Right. And would you like to elaborate so people know what you're talking about? Um, if you were to go out on the street and see many people milling about in broad daylight, you, you wouldn't be able to uh, tell the vampires apart from anybody else. They look and dress, eat, and sleep uh, just as a uh, um, common man does. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't but, vampires uh, not be? I mean, they wouldn't be outside in daylight. Oh, yes. Well, they're they're act the kind of thing you know, are active in the daylight as uh, as well as at night time. Mm -hmm. So the, the, now you're talking about a different kind of vampire. Right? Well, I said we're, we're um, uh, the vampires I'm talking about uh, don't pass for traditional uh, vampires at all, for all intents and purposes. They're just uh, everyday common people. Mm -hmm. and, and so what do they do? Do they suck blood? They're flying like bats? What, what are they, uh, what is their profession? Telephone soliciting. Uh, the telemarketers, right? Um, I really don't think we, um, Call them telemarketers anymore because they were uh, the the, uh, the objective of those people was to sell something. Now, uh, um, in calls that I've received or ignored and let my voicemail uh, answer, there are people uh, calling about um, phony lawsuits or uh, um, having. Um, Paid um, uh, excessive uh, utility bills, or uh, supposedly having trouble with an order they supposed to have they're, they were supposed to have placed, um, or, or they or they say they're calling on behalf of some charity. They're not here. The vampires I'm talking about, these uh, solicitors, or these scammers, are, are not trying to sell anything. They're they're um, they're after your money. Oh, so, so they're scammers. They're trying to instead of blood, they're trying to suck the money out of you. Um, yes. Well, they prey not on blood, but on human ignorance. Great. Yeah. So that that would be a good way to describe. Them. There are there are vampires. So okay. So tell us more. Um. Well, about, uh, um, I'd say about four years ago when, uh, when I never, when I didn't know any better, uh, I started receiving calls from, uh, uh, people seem to know me. I mean, they, uh, they, they asked for me, uh, by name and, uh, I, I don't know how they, I don't know how they got my name and phone number. Because uh, my phone number has always been unlisted, um, 
but they claimed to be from uh, um, uh, local government or, or in most cases, uh, charities in support of uh, um, police, uh, fire, uh, uh, veterans, um, and, and they and they said they're conducting an annual uh, donation drive. Uh, can we count on Can we count on you to make a donation of say uh, fifty dollars? I couldn't afford fifty dollars because my uh, my check balance was very low. Um, I had to uh, I had to convince them that uh, all I could send was about. Ten to fifteen dollars. Um, so they sent out a kit, and I wrote a check and sent it back to them. And more calls came through, um, so that uh, now I had been right. I had written a number of checks now, and uh, and my checking account balance uh, was falling uh, very low, almost to uh, um, the minimum that it had to maintain uh, to avoid being penalized. So so when some other calls came through and I um, and they said they were asking for money, I said, I'm sorry, I can't afford it. Uh, I wrote uh, a number of checks to organizations and people like you and, and it's drained my checking account balance. Okay. So you fell victim to the, the, the first number of uh, scams. Yes. Okay. And then how did you find out that it's all phony and fake? Um, there's a social worker who uh, um, looks, looks at me. She said, um, she said she received many of the same kinds of calls and they um, they were all phonies. They were uh, um, uh, solicitors. Um, when they called on behalf of charities and such, they were um, they, they weren't charity workers. They were um, after your money to to make themselves richer. No, most of the time that's true. So that's the lesson is they shouldn't talk to anybody on the telephone but you don't know you know if they don't if you don't know who they are don't, don't answer well see that's because uh um my my living room phone doesn't have a uh, caller id so i had no idea uh, who was calling or what number they were calling from mm -hmm. so you do have another telephone that does in, in in the bedroom, yes, that's the uh, I have a caller ID. Um, now many times I don't recognize um, the uh, they say where it's coming. They say where what town and state the call is coming from. They don't always uh, give the number. Sometimes when I go to investigate, the, I see the word spam and a question mark next to the number. Um, well, the best thing so to do is you let them leave a message and if somebody you know, you can call them back. But, you know, scammers don't usually leave you messages, so you know it's fake. Um, well, see, my, my neighbor Kathy said that, that, that she receives calls like that. She doesn't answer the phone. She lets the voicemail take over and then the scammer will leave a message but she she says that she can push the button and delete that message right away while it's still recording well that's not the case with my phone um if i let the uh, voicemail take over and uh, and and a message comes through uh, i can't erase it right away i'm stuck with letting the whole message record then uh um, then, then I have to start playing it back and uh, uh, listen to it, and, and then I can delete the button. I uh, delete 
hit the delete button and delete the call uh, after it's already been recorded. But you don't have to listen to the whole message. Either. You would know within the first few seconds if it's somebody you know or you don't. What, what do you mean? Well, like you said, listen, you don't have to listen to the whole message to leave you. I mean, you would know it's a friend of yours or not immediately. So you can delete it right after that. But I'm talking about when a scammer calls. Um, my, my neighbor, Kathy, I, I, have to, I, have to re, I, I have to repeat myself. Kathy says. No, I heard that. that. She, I heard that. I'm uh, just saying. When, when she gets a scam call, she can delete it right away. I can't. Okay, but do, do you listen to the whole message or, or you can hear a couple of seconds and then delete it? Um, I have tried to delete it right away, the way Kathy does, while the message is coming on uh, freshly recorded, when it's record in the recording process. But I hit the delete button and, and nothing happens. I, I'm stuck with... Um, hearing, receiving the whole message before I can delete it. Oh, uh, so uh, you have an old, old fashioned phone. So you actually, you hear him leaving you the messages or is your answering machine? Yes. Okay. So is there, is there a way maybe you can save up and get a newer phone? Um, the one I have now, I haven't had for that long. And, uh, um, I don't. Um, I don't want to uh, have to shell out a lot of money for another one. Mm -hmm. But the one in, in your bedroom, he has a caller ID, so you can just know that if it's a scam, you just don't bother with it, right? You can ignore it. Um, but but in but with the bedroom phone, like I said, uh, when a scammer. Uh, calls. I can't delete the message uh, uh, in its recording prog prog uh, process. I'm stuck with uh, having to receive the whole message before I can delete it. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, I can, I'll take a look. Maybe there's some phones out there that are uh, easier for you to use. I'll, I'll look it up. I haven't used anything but a cell phone in probably uh 15 years now <laughs> so i don't know what the, i don't know what the regular phones do anymore probably probably even more than that i don't even remember last time i had a regular phone so um okay well i hope the listener gets the gist of what i'm talking about these uh these um, threatening or scam calls are made by real-life vampires who, who try to make you give personal information so that so that they can uh, uh, move in on you further. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a good name for them, I think. <laughs> uh, well, see, these yeah. uh, these real-life vampires, you don't you don't see them; you can only hear them. So you have no idea where they are, and even if uh, you caught one uh, talking, uh, uh, sending out a message, you can't uh, you, you can't uh, repel him or her with crosses or garlic or those other traditional uh, anti uh, vampire objects. Yeah, yeah. I wish uh, yeah, garlic. If you put a garlic in the answer machine, though, unfortunately, it's not going to work. <laughs> Okay, so all right, what else? Is there anything else about vampires? Or, or this concludes that uh, that topic. Um. Well, you you know that they're trying to get personal information. If they say that something has happened, and to verify that, hit one of the numbers on on your phone dial, and uh, right. that. That that leads only to more trouble. Yeah, so so please don't give out any any of your personal information to anybody, and don't answer the phone if you don't know who it is, because chances are, like you said, it's a scam, and uh, that will make everything worse for you. 
so maybe this would be this is like a uh, Suzanne's uh, uh, public service announcement to anyone listening. Please don't give out your personal information to any scammers trying to call you pretending to be a charity or organizations, governmental or otherwise. Well, uh, well, one, well, one thing for sure. Uh, before, um, 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 devices came out that uh, that that stopped the sta- the scam calls from coming through. There were a lot. There were a lot of people loose, uh, uh, preying on innocents, and 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 they're they're all real life vampires. Yeah, you hear all kind of terrible stories of them stealing people's uh, life savings and everything. Yeah, so don't be gullible. Don't give out anything. Now, what would Underdog do? Um, uh, He supposedly... um, would overhear uh, the calls being made, and um, um, with X-ray vision, he would see uh, where a scammer was, um, and and could um, uh, barge in and uh, catch the scammer red-handed. So maybe we should enlist the help of the other. I didn't quite get that. We should enlist the help of a good old underdog in, in trying to help us with the uh, scammers. <laughs> if we could, of course. Yeah. Well, thank you, Suzanne, for uh, this this uh, public service announcement. And then hopefully people listen to you uh, uh, and your advice and they don't fall prey and, and victim to the, the scammers they're trying to call you and uh the vampire the vampire yes the vampires yes so okay so we'll talk soon all right all right all right bye-bye bye-bye